my friends are since. In one of my most recent videos, I took you with me through the streets of Seoul, South Korea, where I was trying to find some old bargain vinyl that I would never be able to get back home in Scotland, so that hopefully I would be able to sample them and then make some interesting music with it. Now, I've not got home yet, obviously I'm still here in South Korea, so I've not had a chance to listen to any of that yet. And also, I didn't really plan on doing a follow-up to that video because I'd spent a fair bit of cash on vinyl records and I didn't really want to go out my way to find any more, not least because I don't have much room left in my case. However, I was walking through Hongdae, which is the area that I'm staying in, and I happened to stumble across a place called Peter Pan Records. Now this had been on my list to check out, but I hadn't for whatever reason gotten round to it. It wasn't high on the list, and once I got the others I kind of gave up. But since it seemed to be serendipitous that I was walking past that particular place, I went in and had a look, and as it turns out, they had a shitload of really cool stuff. So I'm going to uh, tell you about it and show you what I got so that if you're in the area doing a similar thing, then I don't know, you can fucking go have a look here because it turned out to actually be a brilliant place. Now, Peter Pan Records can be fairly easy to miss if you're not looking for it specifically. And that is because like many other businesses in this part of the world, it is located on a floor within a fairly nondescript multi-story building. This is not the most intuitive thing in the world if you've never been to a city like Tokyo or Seoul before. However, you can find all sorts of weird and wonderful places, some really cool bars and things within otherwise boring and drab looking outer facades. Now Peter Pan Records is located in the basement of this particular building and once you go down the stairs you open the door into a fairly small area but one which is packed filled with vinyl, books and a whole host of other interesting paraphernalia. The guy who runs the shop and owns it ostensibly was really nice and friendly and helpful and the thing that caught my eye out of everything was the fact that they had a huge selection of boxes of old Japanese 45 inch singles and they were 5 for 10,000. Korean won, which works out at about £1.25 per record. So this was exactly the kind of thing I was after and I ended up grabbing a whole handful of them, something like 15. So let's take a look at what I managed to get. Where possible I've taken them out the plastic wrapper so you can get a better view in this camera. However, that's not always going to be possible. Here we go. Here's the first one. Look at that cover. It's from RC Records, I think it's 1993. Doesn't really say anything else on it. It does say RHS 93, 83, 83. It does kind of look 80s, 90s, doesn't it? Yeah, but this is definitely the kind of thing I would not be able to find back in Scotland. The second one is fantastic. It's got that old time Japanese look. I mean, you just wouldn't get that anywhere else apart from Japan. It's kind of got like a communist look to it, doesn't it? Can I say that? Maybe I'll move on. This next one is particularly cool looking. Uh, it's Aki Shigeru and Beautiful Ruman, which I think is Beautiful Woman, but in Japanese parlance, Yoru no Chu. This is from um, Tokyo, Japan, 1983. Look at that, man. <laughs> Look at them. I particularly like this guy with his sunglasses. And this guy's Tash. Not that guy. This, which is a particularly nicely shot picture, is a very Japanese kind of portrait as well with that soft background, the bokeh, and also the, the pastel type colors. This is from 1991, I think, by the looks of things. Yeah, RCA, oh no, Victor Records. Another very similar one here from uh, Warner Brothers. 1980, allegedly. Another fantastic looking headshot of a guy. I cannot wait to hear what these sound like. Next we've got these guys, which are like, my God, they look like an old boy band or something like that, but like sitting in an old stately home. I actually quite like this picture. And even if this was a modern band, I think that'd be pretty fucking cool. But the best thing is, look at the picture on the rear. How fucking cool is that? I want to be that guy. Now for some older ones, I think these are all within plastic cases that I don't want to remove because it seems like they might crumble and fall apart. This just screams old Japan. I love it. I love the font. I love the colours. I love the kind of hyper real painted photograph on the front. Oh, it's excellent. This one is even better. 
It's got that kind of pop art almost style look to it. There's something about it. The fonts, which are very different to kind of modern Japanese fonts. Uh, this is from, I have no idea when the fuck this is from, but I am excited about this. 1965! 1965! 1965. That's cool as fuck. That's very cool. One pound. One pound. Next we have this wholesome looking lassie, again with a very Japanese style uh, older font. I don't know when this is going to be from. Uh, originally it was 500 yen. 1975? Doesn't look like 1975 though. Maybe that's just the record company trademark or something, but yeah. Next, this was kind of a panic buy because I only had 14 and I wanted to get 15 so I had multiples of 5. So I just picked this one up because I had been in there for a fair bit of time. Um, it looks kind of like a, a serious pop record or, you know, someone that takes themselves quite seriously. Originally 600 yen. This next one looks cool as fuck. I love the purple with the yellow, the pink, just everything that's going on here speaks to me, the different font colours, and it's also got that strip that, what, it's unique to Japan, that kind of paper strip thing for records they used to put it in the front. There is a name for that. This next one it definitely looks like some kind of fucking communist propaganda. Look at that. I don't know who this is. Is this the emperor? <laughs> that shows what I know. Look at his fucking glasses though. What a stylish <laughs> Love it. 500 yen. I'm really curious to see what he sounds like. This next one looks very kind of Mariah Carey, but Japan. Unusually glam, I think, for Japan. That's not usually their their style of choice, I would say. And finally, I got one that seems a bit more modern, at least in terms of the photo and stuff that's used. We have this circus game. Since it was Written in English, this could be an attempt at cracking the foreign market. On the back it's got, bizarrely, some anime style stuff, which is pretty cool. I'm curious to see what this is. I mean, the title of the name, or the title of the record is Sugar, by the looks of things. 1983, that's cool. They've kind of got a 90s girl band look, rather than 83, for life records, I think. Not bad. Curious about this. Now, as a lover of the digital age, I've never been a big fan of vinyl singles. I feel like they take up quite a lot of room, they cost a fair bit of cash usually, and you have to get up and change over the disc more often than you would with an album. So I tend to stick to collecting LPs, but that's what's cool about sampling, is that I found a new use for 45-inch records, which you can pick up really dirt cheap if you look around, and oh, I'm really excited about these. I've kind of I'm kind of on the edge of going back to buy more of them actually because of this. Anyway, I did end up buying two LPs from that shop as well because he was selling two for 10,000 won, which works out at about uh, three pounds each, which is pretty crazy. There was some interesting stuff in there, a lot of Western stuff at that price, which I wasn't as interested in. So, uh, however, I found this, which is a Japanese OST. Now, I wouldn't normally go for original soundtracks, but this had a particularly interesting looking cover to it. You know, some fishermen in there. And the real reason I bought it is, look at this. What the fuck are they playing? I'm curious about that. So I thought there'd be some interesting sounds I could sample from that. It is from the movie The Great Yellow River, I believe. Whatever that is. If you've seen that classic, tell me. 1988 though, so this could be interesting. Or it could be terrible. Now this last record I bought on a whim, it is not Asian, it's not the kind of thing I was interested in looking for or really purchasing at all. However, it felt like fate that I found it and it was only £3 so I felt like I had to pick it up. And that is Bakara Yes Sir, I Can Boogie. For those of you who are not aware, the Scottish Tartan Army, which is our kind of followers of the national football team for whatever obscure reason, adopted this single in particular as their kind of unofficial anthem. They sing it all the time and I actually fucking hate it. However, I mean, three pounds and it's the whole album. So I'm going to try and uh, listen to it and see if I can, I don't know, engender some kind of positive feelings about it. So that's it, that's the end of my second vinyl haul and hopefully I won't be lured back to purchase any more because I don't think I can fit much more into my case to be honest. But if you're similar, you're looking through South Korea and in particular Seoul to try and find old Asian vinyl, 
uh, then fucking get your own idea for a start. But two, definitely go look at Peter Pan because the guy was really nice. They had a big selection and some of the best prices that I've found. In future videos, I'm going to be sampling these things and actually using them within my music. So if you're interested in that, then you should keep following along, hit the like and subscribe button, and also subscribe to the Patreon because I upload things that I sample uh, to there and I'm not going to say much more about that for licensing reasons. But anyway, if you want some samples and stems and everything else, that's what to do. For now, I'm going to go and get drunk some more and eat my weight and bulgogi.